sometimes it is something that it's only for us. But it's still, even if it's for us or for others, it's still we have to believe that God will do his part. That's what we learn in this passage and, and in the whole gospel and also in the apocalypse of Christ. So today we are going to talk about a very interesting uh, subject that uh, pertains to all of us. I mean, we all think about it or at least uh, try to talk about it. And it's very common to all of us. And it is faith. So we will be talking about this, about faith. And as always, we will have the lessons from Christ's gospel or even his apocalypse. Let's see today what is the passage that we get to talk about faith because we all know that Christ has something to teach us, has something to show us. So let's get here. I'm going to get my Bible and let's open here and see what is the passage that we get today, what is the lesson that Christ gives to all of us. And for us to have his blessing, for us to have this guidance to what get from his words, we first say God is present, Jesus lives in our hearts forever. So let's see what is the lesson of Christ to all of us. So we got here this passage of Christ in his gospel according to John chapter 10 verses 22. 242. Let's bring here these words of Christ. And the passage that we are going to study in is spirit and truth under the light of the new commandment of Jesus, that is, love one another as I have loved you. Only by this shall all of you be recognized as my disciples that we find in his gospel according to John chapter 13 verses 34 and 35. We will bring here now this passage. Jesus charged with blasphemy. narrates the evangelist John. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, 
is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, Ye are gods. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, though blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, Believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know, and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand, and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him, and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true, and many believed on him there. As we can see in this passage right here, it is uh, very simple. It is a discussion about faith, because faith is connected to belief, right? When we have faith in something, we believe in something. It's uh, even kind of a connection. When you have faith, you then believe, right? Let me write this right here. You believe, right? It's uh, already a common sense to all of us. But yet, we see here a discussion of those that even though they go to ask Jesus if he's not, uh, if he is Christ himself, and he is answering them not by directly uh, giving them what they want, but showing and making them reflect about his works, about what he did and what he is, is still doing to all of us. So we see here that faith is also connect not only to what we believe or what we have as an ideal of truth and of what needs to be manifested, but it's also connected with works. So faith is something that corresponds to what we believe and to what we put in practice, to what we work for. And later on, the Apostle James in his uh, epistle will say and, and, and use uh, these teachings of Christ as a way to also explain about faith. When he says that James says that a man with faith but not works is the same as a boat in the midst of a storm. 
but a man with works can overcome the storm. Show me your faith without works, and I will show you my faith through works. So you see, faith is something within our reach. It's not something distant and not even something that we have and used to only wait. You cannot say that, oh, I have faith that things will change and then wait for the change if you're not doing anything. It doesn't work like that because faith is that what gives you energy to do and make the change. Brother Paiva has a quote about this. He teaches us that faith is the fuel of good deeds. So when we have that, we are willing to do something, to take a step, to move, to work for it. And Christ is giving us all that by work, by showing his purpose in this world, by showing himself through his actions. He is one with God. He's telling us, look, here I am doing all these things in the name of the Father, the name of God. And yet you ask me, won't that show you that I and the Father are one? That I am connected with the Father, that I am connected with God and manifesting His will? And I believe that I am doing it so rightly. And they even say that he is saying blasphemies. But Christ <laughs> answers them like, look, you're saying that to me, but even in the law, is it not written, you are God's? And we put here God's with a little g. <laughs> right? Isn't it written that? And you are saying that I'm, I'm bringing here blasphemy? How is that possible? You predicted that. You are saying that we are all capable of doing God's work in this world. And now that I'm saying that, look, if you do not believe that I'm Christ, even if I say to you, sometimes even when we say things uh, and um, we have a lot of examples of that in our lives, when someone asks you, is anything wrong? Is there something that I need to do to correct uh, what I did or, or, or uh, what we are facing here? And sometimes, even when you say them directly, look, that's the problem. They won't believe you. They won't listen to you. So, even if they ask, it doesn't mean that the answer needs to give to be given is uh, directly. And and that's what we are seeing here. Christ, uh, we can give the answer in so many ways, and Christ is giving them the answer that He is the Son of God, that, that He is here in the name of God through His work, through His actions. So, with this passage, what we need to take from this is that we can show our faith not by saying it, not by speaking about it, but doing something for it, showing our faith through works. If I believe in goodness, so do things that are good. If I believe in peace, work for peace. If I believe that love is essential in our lives, work for love. 
And that's uh, all the concept of a term that Brother Paiva brings to all of us called accomplishing faith. When you have the belief in something, right, as I just uh, brought here, for instance, love, and you work to accomplish that in your life. You work in a way that your actions will reflect your faith. And even if someone says, I don't have faith, it's not true. And it's not because uh, we are trying to uh, say that, oh, uh, you are being a liar, you uh, will be condemned, and damn you, go, go to hell if you don't have faith. No, it's not like that. It's actually a very simple concept. It's actually uh, something that is very present in our lives, as I was saying here in the beginning. Everybody has faith in something. If you, let's say, uh, apply for a university, <laughs> you have faith that they will accept your application. And you will do everything that is in your that, that is in your capacity to achieve that goal, to make that faith true. Now, when we uh, do our work, we have to also uh, understand that there is the other side. And I'm not, uh, I'm not only saying about the others, because not everything that we are doing or that we have faith and we decide to do is uh, directly connected with others. No. Sometimes it is something that it's only for us, but it's still, even if it's for us or for others, it's still we have to believe that God will do his part. That's what we learn in this passage and, and in the whole gospel and also in the apocalypse of Christ, that we need to do our part by Christ himself did and is doing. We have to do our part. We have to uh, have faith and do the work, but also believe, and in this case have faith, that God will do his part. And that's faith. That's a reflection that I wanted to bring uh, about faith uh, for all of us and with this teaching of Christ showing us that we present faith in our lives through work, not only by words, but especially through work. We can say it, we can think about it, but it will only materialize itself. It will only become true in our lives when we do something for it. Even if we are talking about miracles, and that's a subject for another uh, video, but even when we are talking about miracles, they work for a reason, and something was prepared for them to be completed or to happen. Uh, depends on your uh, choice of words. But then, idea here is, and to conclude, and I'm gonna write here for us to all see, is that we all can be one with God through accomplishing faith. Thank you for your attention and I hope that you liked this topic. We finish by saying these words that brings to all of us the peace of God, His presence and the love of Christ. God is present, 
Jesus lives in our hearts forever. May the light of Christ be the north of your life. Thank you.